Here are the nine Easter eggs you missed in Spider-Man Homecoming. Spider-Man Homecoming finally swung into theaters this weekend, and we don't need a spoiler warning to tell you what you already know deep down in the cockles of your heart. A, it was awesome. And B, why am I using my fingers? It laid a big old spider sack full of MCU Easter eggs, and they're about to hatch, baby. But still, spoiler warning, because we're about to break open dem eggs and some plot spoilers are bound to come creeping, crawling out. Now, before we begin, keep in mind these are Easter eggs you could have only known about by seeing the movie. So stuff already covered in the trailers, like how the ATM robbers wearing Avengers masks is a reference to Ultimate Spider-Man number 42, or how Jennifer Connelly is the voice of Peter's suit lady will not be mentioned, except for when I mentioned them just now. So got it? Great. So hey ho, let's go. I'm a Ramon. That was very catchy. All the way to the end, let's go all the way to the end of the movie, because if there's one big lesson that Spider-Man learned from his friends in the MCU, it's that you always save your biggest tease for the bitter end. And Homecoming had a pretty big end credits tease, with the Vulture getting confronted by a fellow inmate in prison, who we saw earlier in the movie sporting a very noticeable scorpion neck tattoo. Yep, that was Mac Gargan, aka the Scorpion, one of Spidey's classic rogues. And of course, at this point, a new villain tease is kind of standard issue for an end credit scene, but what made it interesting was Gargan's reference to a couple of guys who were up to no good and wanted to make trouble in Peter's neighborhood, who would like to see Spider-Man get swatted. Now correct us if we're wrong, but that sure sounds like a setup for the Sinister Six if I've ever heard one. And while that'll certainly add some interesting wrinkles to the Wallcrawler's adventures in the future, its impact on real world movie politics may be even more interesting because rumor has it that Sony is also planning its own Sinister Six movie that'll tie into their Marvel villain universe that is not tied to the MCU. You know how they're making a Venom movie that's not connected to Spider-Man, weird. So what does this mean for Marvel and Sony? They're gonna have competing Sinister Six movies in their respective universes? Well, maybe. But Spider-Man's rogues gallery is so robust that there are more than enough villains to go around for a Sinister Six, a Terrible 12, or even an Evil 18. And for more on that, check out my Dan Cave about the worst Spider-Man villains of all time. Spider-Man, stilt man, you f <laughs> However, we could see this custody battle for Doc Ock getting pretty brutal. He's just got eight hands and he wants to hug all of you. Now coming in at number two, fans finally got their wish. Donald Glover is finally in a Spider-Man movie, just not playing Spider-Man, but he is related to one. Glover's criminal character is Aaron Davis, AKA the Prowler from the Ultimates comics universe. And he's also the uncle to future Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Now in the movie, Glover mentions having a nephew in that neighborhood, meaning we now have confirmation there is a young Miles Morales somewhere in the MCU just waiting to spin some webs of his very own. And in a recent interview about Homecoming, MCU chief Kevin Feige mentioned they have a five film arc planned for Peter Parker that will run from Civil War to Homecoming 2. Could this reference mean they're all already setting up for Miles to take over once that arc has finished? Only time will tell. But also a fun side note, the license plate on his car read UCSM01, which is probably a reference to Ultimate Comics, Spider-Man number one, Miles' first ongoing comic book. And coming at number three, speaking of surprise character setups, despite all the denials, it looks like Zendaya is playing MJ after all, or at least the MCU's version of MJ, who is named Michelle instead of Mary. But there were a few shout outs to the old Mary Jane of old as well. Midtown High School's mascot, the Midtown High Tiger, is a reference to Mary Jane's pet name for Peter, Tiger. You get it, not Midtown High, that'd be weird. And of course, we also have Karen urging Peter to kiss Liz while hanging upside down, which is a callback to the classic upside down kiss from the first Speederman movie. What a good movie. And coming at number four, a few more of Peter's old friends also made appearances in Homecoming. We now know where Betty Brandt got her start in journalism before going to work at the Daily Bugle. She was a school reporter for Midtown High's closed circuit cable channel. And her co-host, well, you might need to pull out some long boxes for that one. That was Jason Ionello, a member of Flash Thompson's gang of popular kids who originally appeared in the Untold Tales of Spider-Man. In those books, he spent most of his time picking on Peter, but it's nice to see that he's channeled that energy into something more productive, like flatly reading the school news to his fellow classmates on a truly bizarre and discomforting news show. And speaking of bizarre and discomforting news reporting, it's nice to see Peter showing off what being a photographer means in 2017, filming the battle sequences in Civil War in his own Peter React series. Like and subscribe, y'all. Thwip. <laughs> For Easter egg number five, Homecoming took lots of inspiration from the classic Spidey comics, with specific scenes being taken directly from the books themselves. In addition to the ATM fight with the Faco Avengers, there's also the scene where Spidey almost meets his demise when he's nearly crushed to death beneath a building. This is a clear homage to Amazing Spider-Man issue number 33. And in that same near death by building scene, we also see Spidey peering into a puddle and seeing his half-masked face in the reflection. This is a classic visual that we see in comics almost all the time. Hell, I have a pin 
That's half Peter Parker face, half Spidey face. Usually when like he it has his like Spidey sense, he's like, oh boy, I'm Peter under here. Danger's afoot. Anyway, we also get to see Peter hilariously running through a golf course to get to the action, which is a subtle reference to the comedic issue when cometh the commuter in Amazing Spider-Man number 267, where Spidey gets stuck in the suburbs with no buildings to swing from. We even see him fall from a tree in front of an unsuspecting kid in the comics, which is another great reference in the flick when he falls in front of those two girls in the tent. For number six, we have some previously mentioned Avengers accessories. John Favreau's Happy Hogan stumbles over the pronunciation of Thor's magic belt, Megan Jord, or Megan Yord. I don't know, I don't speak as Guardian, ask Kyle. But anyway, let's talk about that other high value item that Happy's packing up from the Avengers Midtown HQ, Cap's Experimental Shield. Now back in Iron Man 1, we see a version of Cap's shield on Tony's workbench. And of course that happened before Stark and Cap ever met. He was still but a capsicle at the time, but that doesn't mean that Tony wouldn't hold on to some perfectly good tech. Whether or not he actually finished whatever work he was doing on the shield, we don't know, but we think it would make sense that he'd pack it up along with the rest of his stash. And for number seven, did you get a peek at all the war photos and the bling in the principal's office during that scene? I mean, how could you not? That office was more decorated than that one neighbor's lawn during the holidays. Rachel. Turns out that stacked shot of the memorial regalia wasn't just showing off Principal Marita's track record as a military fanboy, it was a callback to Captain America. Marita's grandfather was one of the howling commandos with Captain America in the first Avengers. So that photo and all those medals all over the principal's office actually belonged to his grandfather. And if they look similar, there's a good reason for that. Grandpappy Marita and Principal Marita are played by the same actor, Kenneth Choi. Nailed it, Kenneth. For number eight, we're gonna loop back to the beginning of Homecoming. Did you notice the old school Spider-Man theme was integrated into Marvel's logo opening? Because it was. Here comes the Spider-Man. Ah, the 60s. Gotta love how simple and clear those lyrics are. Nowadays, they're all metaphors and work, 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 work. The Ramones also did a cover of the 60s Spider-Man theme, did you know? And the Ramones are also used heavily in this movie, so that's kind of like an Easter egg high five to any kid that came from Queens. And finally, for number nine, we're swinging back around to the end of the movie and the reveal of the most tricked out spider suit of all time, or at least in Spidey's on-screen existence. Except it's not actually the iron spider suit from the comics as some folks have erroneously been claiming because first of all, the colors are wrong. I mean, hello? The Iron Spider is red and gold in the comics because branding. And there's also no legs or tentacles on this suit. You know, I guess they'd be legs because spiders, not tentacles, but that would be, oh my God, what a nightmare. Anyway, this latest cinematic take on a Starkified Spidey suit is much more like the spider armor. And really, the new spider suit and all it stands for, Peter Parker's divided loyalties between the Avengers and remaining a hometown hero are pretty well represented in that last big scene. Throughout the comics, Peter is either turned down by the Avengers or turns them down himself. Due to his own schedule and other personal reasons, Spidey's often flirted with but ultimately rejected full-time Avengers membership, being relegated to sort of an honorary or reserve status. So, giving up the chance to join the Avengers and wear that sick new suit is honestly right in line with Spidey's ongoing dilemma. But tell me, what did you guys think? Were you a Spider fan of Homecoming? Do you want Miles Morales to join the MCU? Were there other Easter eggs that we missed? Let's discuss. Now, if you like this story, be sure to check out Nerdist News Talks Back. What is it? I'm glad you asked, Internet Stranger. It's our live daily chat show where we talk about the biggest news stories of the day, interact with the fans in real time, and take turns attempting to troll Jessica Chobot. <laughs> it's so easy. Check it out every day at 1 p.m. on YouTube and ProjectAlpha.com. See you there. Thwip! <laughs>